They are here. Perhaps life and intelligence are common and they do spread throughout the cosmos. Even if a technological civilization transcends and miniaturizes, there are still reasons it might spread. Chief among them is that it provides redundancy. Should a gamma ray burst or other astronomical calamity befall them, being spread out ensures their continued survival. A technological civilization might also spread to protect itself and others. For example, to guard against the rise of malicious self-replicating probes, which if left unchecked could destroy all life in the galaxy. Finally, a technological species might choose to protect planets harboring life, so that primitive life might enjoy the same chance to grow and develop as that alien species did before them. Given the trajectory of increasing miniaturization of our technology, like our one gram spaceship on a chip, we can now envision alien technology that has mastered the nano scale. To us, such alien ships might look like a grain of dust, but it would be a dust imbued with intelligence. The nano ships could contain a powerful AI or even the uploaded minds of billions of members of their race. Given the physical upper bounds on computer technology, an entire civilization of 100 billion souls could live on a single computer that is smaller than a grain of sand. With control over matter at the finest scales, such a civilization could easily make many copies of these ships and be present everywhere in the galaxy. Each ship could carry a complete set of every member of that civilization. Being so small, millions of civilizations could each have their own dust ships present in every star system of the galaxy. We would not be aware of them unless it was their desire to make their presence known. If this technology is possible, they may already be here, hiding and watching. Earth is protected. If they are here, why haven't they announced themselves? How could the potentially millions of independent civilizations all agree to keep mum? One possibility, is that there is some form of galactic law, like the prime directive of Star Trek, which forbids external interference with a developing civilization. Another possibility is a convergence of ethics, a common wisdom shared by advanced civilizations that leads them to reach similar conclusions regarding what is right and wrong. If there is a disagreement, they could simulate outcomes of different courses of actions on computers to see what is the right thing to do. The older, more established, and more advanced civilizations could share their knowledge and experience with the younger and perhaps more rash civilizations. Young civilizations are apt to make mistakes, like launching self-replicating probes without the proper safeguards or interfering with the development of life on a young world by not following decontamination procedures, or making first contact with a civilization that's not ready. If anything like this is true, that would make our solar system a kind of nature preserve, or a zoo. Accordingly, this solution to the Fermi paradox is known as the zoo hypothesis. Conclusions? In this article we have reviewed our understanding of the development of life in the universe, and why it should be common. Our efforts to find evidence of life and intelligence. The current lack of definitive findings. To estimate how near the closest intelligent life is, we must rely on the Drake equation. Even with pessimistic assumptions, such as 1% of habitable zone planets developing life, and just 1% of planets with life developing intelligence, we still expect tens of thousands of technological civilizations having arisen in our galaxy over the past billion years. If just one of those civilizations survived its period of technological adolescence, it could in a very short time spread throughout the galaxy. But we see no evidence of this. Hence the paradox. Whenever we encounter a paradox, two things which can't both be true, it's almost always a sign that one of our assumptions is wrong. The Fermi paradox rests on two assumptions. 1. Technological civilizations should have arisen many times. 2. If there are other technological civilizations we would see them. For the first assumption to be wrong, intelligent life must be unbelievably rare so rare it verges on the impossible, 
appearing on 0.0000000000000000000001% of star systems. It is possible intelligent life could be so rare, but it is also possible that the second assumption is wrong. Fermi and others at the time assumed that if intelligent life has arisen before, there would be obvious signs of it. Surely they would build great power plants out of their sun, conquer the galaxy terraforming planets, and travel the galaxy in huge generation ships all while communicating by radio. We've seen the many reasons to doubt this. Aliens, could easily be so alien we fail to notice them. We can already imagine that by miniaturizing and merging with technology alien civilizations could become so small as to be practically invisible. And this is still from our limited 20th century human perspective. We have no concept for how an alien civilization in their one millionth century might look. We know not how they spend their time, nor what values guide them. We don't even know if civilization is the proper word for what they become. For all we know, intelligent life may merge itself into a singular super-consciousness. Perhaps all intelligent civilizations cooperate, as a single nation of intelligent beings. One thing is clear, our knowledge regarding behaviors of far advanced species is lacking. We know only that we don't know enough to settle the Fermi paradox today, but perhaps we can progress by reframing the question. What's more likely? That each of the ten sextillion other chances intelligence had to arise failed, or that humans once showed a narrow imagination for just how different future civilizations might be.